accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, be advised that notice of this meeting was made by posting on the bulletin board at Town Hall and serving the official designated newspapers a notice stating that this meeting would take place at Town Hall at 7.30 p.m. on today's date. May I? We all stand to see the flag. attended Lincoln Tech Institute, where he graduated as a certified diesel technician. After working in the field for several years with Penske Truck Leasing and Store Tractor Company, he was hired by the Milburn Fire Department in September of 2004. Michael has been a productive member and has received several certifications with the Fire Department, including becoming a member of the UASI Metro Strike Team, platoon mechanic and, also, and has also extended his mechanical ability to become an emergency vehicle technician to work on our fire trucks. Michael resides in Elizabeth with his wife Lisa of 17 years. They have three children, Amanda, Dean, and Madison, and two grandchildren, Autumn and Bryce. May I have a motion to approve the February 6, 2018 Township Oh, sorry. We have a motion to approve resolution 18100, which confirms the promotion of Michael Pershing. So moved. We have a second. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Levy? Yes. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. The clerk will now issue your oath of office.
Cunningham is being promoted to the rank of Battalion Fire Chief. Captain Bernie Cunningham is a lifelong resident of Milburn Township. After graduating Milburn High School, he furthered his education and became a licensed electrician. His history and connection to the Milburn Fire Department started at a very young age growing up across the street from the firehouse. Bernie started his fire career in Milburn as a volunteer firefighter and then transitioned over to the career division. Bernie has completed several New Jersey firefighting emergency related courses, state certification, and is a New Jersey State Fire Inspector Fire Official. Bernie was promoted to the rank of, of, of Captain in 1996. His duties included his assignment to the line division with the responsibility of overseeing the maintenance of our fire hydrants, purchasing water supply equipment, and firefighting appliances. Bernie has received two battle awards for the rescue of two children from the second floor of a burning township home and another for rescuing trapped residents from the rising high flood waters. Here tonight with Bernie is his wife, Colleen, his three daughters, Bridget, Nora, and Deirdre, and family and friends. After his promotion, Battalion Chief Cunningham will be assigned as platoon commander of the second platoon. Deputy Mayor. May I have a motion to approve resolution 18-101, which confirms the promotion of Bernard Cunningham. Can I have a second? Second. Roll call. Ms. Levy? Yes. Ms. Leeward? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Thalega? Yes. Thank you. The clerk will now issue your oath of office. Okay. I, Bernard Cunningham. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution. I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. The United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the state of New Jersey. Of the state of New Jersey. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of Battalion Fire Chief. The duties of Battalion Fire Chief. Of the Milburn Township Fire Department. Of the Milburn Township Fire Department. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. While you're all still here, we actually have a, a proclamation on the same subject. I have a proclamation, whereas the Milburn Township Committee values the hard work, dedication, and courage of our Milburn Township firefighters, recognizing those who have performed outstanding service. 
for our community. And whereas our Milburn Township firefighters protect us from harm, keep our community safe every day, and the township appreciates these noble individuals and acknowledges that others like them will continue to unselfishly make sacrifices in order to safeguard that which we hold dear. And whereas on December 31, 2017, the Milburn Township Fire Department was dispatched to a report of a structure fire at 125 Summit Avenue in Summit. Upon arrival, a Summit firefighter climbed the ladder, safely rescuing a distraught occupant and her pet from the second floor. In Milburn Engine 5-2, Captain Cunningham and his crew, Firefighter Persian and Firefighter Murazan, assisted with the ladders on the ground. Within a minute of removing the two occupants, both windows became heavily involved in fire. Another victim was very panicked, unable to follow the initial verbal instructions. And despite being frightened and cold, was able to be guided onto and down the ladder through the determined efforts of a Summit firefighter and Milburn firefighter at Murazon. And whereas, without regard for their personal safety, Captain Cunningham and his crew, Firefighter Persian and Firefighter Murazon, assisted in a successful rescue. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Milburn and on behalf of Milburn Township residents. On this 17th day of April, 2018, we recognize Captain Cunningham, Firefighter Persian and Firefighter Murazan, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and extend, and extend our thanks that they so rightly deserve for yours and their selfless and heroic acts and assistance in bringing residents to safety. I have a proclamation for all three of you. today and Chief Roberts I recognize in the house. Thank you for supporting your brothers and thank you for all your service. This is really what the town's about when you look around this room and see. So go enjoy your celebration and we'll take a three minute break for those who want to stay. Thank you for back there. This is our county representative of Anything to Report. Quiet, <laughs> um, Okay, so Saturday the 28th, um, there will be a drug kickback day. Um, the county executive, along with the uh, sponsoring this event, um, said that the county will be taking on over the counter drugs, on these prescription drugs. One of the permits is right here in Melbourne is a police station. Um, so we encourage uh, residents to uh, dispose of their unused uh, pharmaceuticals. Um, also, um, the county Zick had a press conference on Friday at the uh, Cody Arena for a number of um, partnerships with various groups um, for 5K runs, walks that are taking place started last weekend, but going all the way to the fall into November. So the next one is going to take place on May 5th, and that's a walk to cure arthritis, and the sponsor of that are Barnabas Health. Um, anyone who participates will get a wristband to uh, get a reduced rate to the zoo and to the, uh, the safari doll. So we encourage everybody to try to uh, attend that. It's a good event. Um, next, uh, I had previously reported as, but just a reminder, May 5th is Essex County uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day at um, the Old Hospital Center at 125 Fairview Avenue. Uh, that event we will uh, take in uh, unused paint. Um, into hazardous material, but the list of items are on the website. And lastly, uh, on May 19th, that is the Computer and Electronics for Second Day also taking place at the site up at uh, uh, Fairview Avenue, 125 Fairview Avenue. So all the events I described are on the county's website, so if uh, anyone would like to just uh, refer to them, uh, we encourage you to do so. Do we link to the county website on our website? Yes, Great. Thank you, George. Okay, reports. Okay, I answered the vote. Uh, I attended the uh, Board of Rec Commissioners meeting on uh, April 4th, and uh, it's a long meeting. There's a, a lot of details to report about what's going on in the town, recreation activities. But 
some of the highlights are that uh, there are new batting cages. Those are probably paid for by the rec department and Melbourne Short Hills Youth Baseball. They are almost ready to go, and uh, they are uh, all brand new cages that are used exclusively during the baseball season for the Little League teams, but during off hours they are open to uh, other residences. Other residents. There's a, ref a revised fireworks ordinance, fireworks ordinance being discussed. Uh, there was no decision made by the rec commission. The rec commission <coughs> had to make a recommendation to the township committee about revising an, an ordinance on fireworks. There were discussions about whether sparklers, for instance, or pops are allowed in, uh, in the parks and things like that. No decision was made by the rec commission. We all had a, a robust discussion on the issue without trying to uh, damp down any parties with fireworks and things like that, but there's a new ordinance that will be, rec a new ordinance that will be recommended to the Township Committee. With regard to numbers of uh, rec teams, uh, it was reported that, mem that membership in T-ball is down, but softball is up, track is up. There's a new volleyball adult league, which only has a few members. People are encouraged to go on the website and sign up for adult volleyball. Some dates, on June 10, there'll be a four-mile run. On April 28, there is a fishing derby, and adult softball registration has just started. So for those interested, go to the website and sign up. That concludes my report. I heard there's a really nice new sign at the baseball field. A lot of people have been uh, really excited about it. Yeah. So I something so effective. Remember, this is just a game. Parents are volunteers. That was put up by the Little League. Yeah. That was put up by the Little League to make sure that parents remember that they're not playing. <laughs> so the Environmental Commission was very busy. Um, first we had a guest speaker and a couple of residents, and the Environmental Commission unanimously signed a letter of support from a group of residents against the proposed gas station at 24-7-7-Eleven. This property is on the corner of Milburn Avenue at Vox Hall and was purchased by New Jersey Energy and is seeking 22 zoning variances from Milburn's Board of Adjustment, which is completely separate from this board, but the Environmental Commission heard from these residents, and they want us to share that on May 7th, if you were to just party, you should go to that zoning board. Um, we had another guest speaker, Trish Kellen from town, and she wanted to remind Milburn residents about the Pilgrim Pipeline. Now, Milburn did sign Resolution 15028, that was in 2015, to express opposition to the Pilgrim Pipeline. Just a brief history. This pipeline, pipeline project aims to construct two parallel pipelines carrying brack and shale oil south of Albany to Linden, New Jersey, and then send refined products of this kerosene back up north. The pipelines go right through the Ramapo River, the Burry Valley Aquifers, the Perseid River, which is a major source of Milburn drinking water, and the Highlands region. Also, li um, not limited to, but some of the densely populated towns affected are Livingston, Florham Park, Chatham Borough, Madison, Chatham Township, and Berkeley Heights. Milburn was asked to consider going a step further and sign on to this municipal pipeline group that has retained the services of an environmental attorney. Right now, this is completely and fully funded, and they don't know if they will ever have to use these funds because right now this process is trying to be permitted through New York State DEP. If they nix it, it's never going to even come down to New Jersey DEP. But if it does get passed in New York State, it can come to New Jersey, and this group, CAPP, Coalition Against the Pilgrim Pipe Pipeline, is ready. They're armed. They've been doing research for years on this, and it's something Milburn, we're going to look into this, see if we want to sign on further besides our initial initial resolution that opposed it. Um, I went to Trenton yesterday in, I attended Mayor Burson's absence, the Rowan River Mayor's Council, to discuss flood mitigation for the affected towns. The purpose of this meeting was to get Catherine McCabe, who's the new acting commissioner for the New Jersey DEP, familiar with what's been going on in our Rowan River flooding areas. This group has been lobbying for flood control and advocating, advocating for a feasibility study for the integrity of the dam and South Mount Reservation for way over 10 years. And it was now transferred from the colonel of the New York State Army Corps of Engineers to the New England Colonel, Colonel Condé. 
and they believe that New England has better experience and expertise on dams. So all this data is now first being transferred to New England Corps. So all this money and all this time, we really haven't gotten very far. But on a positive note, they have um, streamlined the permitting process for local towns to do some dredging and cleaning up of its own local waterways, like removing trees and debris. And while that is a good thing, a lot of these towns that are affected don't have the money and the manpower. So I was sitting next to um, State Senator Kane, and he suggested we look into something that what they did to save Bambrook. They actually made like a regional flood planning. And that way we could like maybe group resources to clean some of these waterways and keep the flooding. Because this thing in the South Mountain Reservation Dam, this might be 10 more years. So it was really upsetting because the people who worked so hard for all these towns, from Cranford and Springfield. So we're hoping that maybe I can set up as a liaison or near Burstein and with Sarah Sherman from the South Mountain Civic Association, we could work with Senator Tom Keene to look into this. And um, I think that's it. Alice? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Mayor Woman Yes, I attended the uh, Arboretum meeting on April 12th. The March meeting was uh, canceled due to inclement weather. Please know that the Arboretum lost power for five days during the March storm. And many of the animals endured a hardship and were taken home by the director, Tador, to ensure for their safety in the cold environment. Fifteen trees were lost and they're in the process of cleaning up and will be replanting selectively. Happy to report that spring camp was very well attended despite the shortened school break. And particularly uh, well populated was the explorers group, which was the youngest of the, of the children's group. On May 12th, previously scheduled was the Zubilee event at Turtleback Zoo. This will be postponed. Unfortunately, the zoo also experienced tremendous damage during the March storm. And it turns out that that's the evening after the paper mill gala, so it's best to postpone. On April 27th, which is next Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. at the Arboretum, there will be a musical and an event with uh, a live band called Marry the Sea, which is an indie rock band. It's very popular. And there'll be a microbrewery uh, event from beer from uh, the Hackett's and Hackettstown Zigmeister Brewery. Since they will be serving alcohol, it's 21 and older only, no children. And it's capped at 60 individuals for a fire code. The Arboretum address is 324 Forest Drive. And looking ahead in May, there'll be an event at the Boxcar one evening as a fun friend raiser. And that'll be in mid-May. More details to follow. Thank you. And our attorney, Falcon, has something important to report. Yes, I received today a copy of a lawsuit submitted to the Superior Court naming Milbert Township and the Township Planning Board in a builder's remedy lawsuit brought by the Woodland Group, an affiliate of the Silverman Group, mm -hmm. concerning their Chatham Road property. I provide a copy of this pleading to Ed Buzak, the attorney for the planning board, for his information. Uh, we'll be reviewing the pleadings and we'll advise the township committee concerning the filing of the response. Other than that, I won't have any further comment with respect to this at the present time. Thank you. Um, can I add one thing? For people who are not familiar with the Pilgrim, Pilgrim Pipeline, there is some information that we did have printed out. It's on the table over there. That's the end of the reports. I have nothing to report. Okay, so looking at the consent agenda, only the consent agenda. Are there any comments from the committee or the public in regards to any items listed on the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Committee? Public? Okay. May I have a motion to approve the resolutions listed on the consent agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberman? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Edwell? Yes. Okay. Now we move on to resolution 18 108. 
which deals with flexible parking and removal of the downtown flexible parking. Among the committee, are there any comments or questions pertaining to resolution 18-108? This, <coughs> just so both the audience and the township committee, namely myself, is clear that this uh, resolution authorizes Mr. McDonald to obtain bids. It doesn't authorize the removal of parking. It doesn't confirm the removal of parking. It just authorizes essentially due diligence and research should the township committee enact the resolution later authorizing such work to be performed. Mm -hmm. is, that, is, that, is my understanding fair? Correct. This is only to send this out to bid. That said, starting the process does start the ball rolling. And to start the process, there should be some sort of consensus that we at least are interested in finding this out. And, and otherwise, you know, we probably wouldn't do it. but. We are not wed to right. to doing anything. I just want to make sure that both the audience and uh, everyone else who has an interest in this topic understands that. This is just a resolution for bids only. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, and a proviso. <coughs> These bid documents haven't been prepared now that has a contract. If you put a project out to bid and you receive a bid which is First of all, within the engineer's estimate of what the project or was, uh, and you have, in order to reject those bids, there are certain criteria that would have to be met in the statute in order to do that. So uh, this isn't quite the exploratory uh, adventure that I think might think I and mean, this is a serious step and it indicates a desire to receive bids and to implement a project when uh, the bids come in subject to what I said. That is my understanding. Good. Okay. I do have a statement I'd like to read. Um, I am very pleased that this resolution is being presented tonight. I am confident that Alex and our engineering department will do everything necessary to get the specs ready to go out for bids in the timeliest manner. I have sat with Alex and we discussed a very strict yet achievable timeline. There are many issues or problems that have come with the complete street project, but the raised concrete parking stands on its own for so many reasons. It is confusing, people have damaged their vehicles, it is dirty, it is the single most recent residents and non-residents say they do not want to come into town. It is the most mocked and ridiculed of the entire project. I say it was a bad experiment by the designers and never should have been allowed and we must remove it. While I do feel the entire Complete Street project needs to be reevaluated, I believe this is a start of getting Milburn's downtown back. We do need to address the no left at, onto Essex at Charlie Brown's and the no left except for large buses at Fiamo onto Essex Street. This can alleviate also some of the frustration and hopefully stop some of the never before seen cutting through of traffic in Washington and South Mountain sections. While I sat on the ad hoc committee all of last year, the engineers said both these left turns can indeed be brought back. And I will give this to the clerk for the record. Any other comments? As a candidate for township committee last year, I pledged to address and correct some of the negative components of complete streets, and it was one of the cornerstones of my campaign. The three major issues were flex parking, the bump outs, and the narrowing of Milburn Avenue to one lane. I successfully ran on this issue. We've just completed a survey of over 1,200 residents, merchants, and surrounding community members that overwhelmingly voted to return to curb parking and remove the flex. We now have the support of various stakeholders to move forward. In my conversations with Township Administrator, this construction could take place over the summer in an expeditious fashion with our own engineers managing the project, and rigorous oversight of the, by the Township Committee. We anticipate four to six weeks for both sides of the street and a completion date on or before August 30th. I believe this is the right thing to do. It demonstrates commitments to our residents, our merchants, and our visitors, and it was the number one complaint that we can rectify in a relatively expeditious manner as a governing body. I believe this is money well spent and has my support. Thank you for the thoughtful statements.
May I now have a motion to approve resolution 18 108. So moved. And a second. Second. May I have a roll call vote? Mr. Levy? Yes. Mr. Lieberberg? Yes. Mr. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Hall Yes. yes. Okay. Now we're ready for the 2018 budget public hearing and consideration of documents. So the 2018 budget was introduced by the Township Committee at our March 6th meeting. May I have a motion to approve resolution 18-109, which authorizes the Township to read the 2018 municipal budget by title. So moved. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call vote? Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Leibsler? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gabloff, I believe you're going to give us a brief introduction before we open it for public sure. comment. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Deputy Commissioner and Township Committee. Um, thank you for giving us a, a few minutes. Um, so the presentation is just kind of a quick summary of what we did for the February 20th meeting, just to kind of refresh everybody's memory. Um, so the amount to be raised by taxation in this year's budget is a 0% increase. The overall budget is $58 million. Um, general breakdown of the tax rate, um, the bottom piece there is exactly the same from the municipal portion. Let me make sure I um, say that correctly. The municipal portion of the rate is the same as it was for 2017, um, which is 8.431, which again is a 0% municipal tax rate increase. General revenues make up about 13% of the budget. That's fees and permits, street opening permits, um, court fines, things of, things of that nature. Um, we use about, or we'll use $4.8 million of our municipal fund balance or surplus, um, which makes up about 8% of the budget. And then property taxes, our amount to be raised by taxes is 73% of the budget. And then the library taxes um, is another 6% of the overall tax rate. So one, one of the things that we try to look at is what makes up the budget. And instead of trying to throw out the dollars and it, try to put this into more of a real perspective. Um, so for every dollar that we spend, that's kind of the breakdown. Public safety and municipal services, which is our police, fire, public works, recreation department, um, make up probably just over 50% of the entire budget. Um, our capital and debt is eight cents for every dollar, and then things such as our workers' comp insurance, social security expenses, general liability insurance makes up another 29% uh, per dollar. So the chart on the side kind of gives a just a quick general view of how everybody's dollars are broken out. Um, this is just a quick look at how your overall tax dollars are spent. There's four components. There's the municipal, the school, the county, and the library, which is 2%, and that's the smallest portion. Um, the school being the largest at 47%, and the county at 28%, and then the municipal portion um, is 23% of your overall tax dollars. And this just gives a general idea based on an average of residential property value of $1.2 million, almost $1.3 million, of what your tax bill would look like. Um, obviously, more or less on the property value has an impact on that. But in general, um, the municipal taxes, which is the first line, is flat. Um, overall, based on the estimates that we have from the school and the county, and again, I don't, we don't have their exact numbers, um, but based on the estimate, um, it would be an increase on average of four hundred one dollars and eighty six cents, or a one point six nine percent increase overall. Um, again, the municipal portion there is uh, no increase. Okay. That is what we have just on the quick budget summary. If anybody has any questions, any questions from the committee? I hereby open the public hearing for any comments on the two thousand eighteen municipal budget. Is there anybody from the public who has any comments on the 2018 municipal budget? I 
now close the public hearing on the 2018 <laughs> Resolution 18-110. May I have a motion to approve Resolution 18-110 with authorizes adoption of the 2018 budget. So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Levy? Yes. Mr. Lieberberg? Yes. Mr. Rosenberg? Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay. Now, on to our ordinances. So, I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Township of Milburn, Ordinance Number 2498-18, an ordinance to amend and supplement the Loading Zone Ordinance of the Township of Milburn. The purpose of this amendment to the Loading Zone Ordinance is to de designate specific areas for commercial vehicles to park and be able to actively load or unload goods for area businesses and to assist commercial vehicles with finding easy access to parking and prevent parking that will impede the flow of traffic on roadways. So, for example, behind La Strada and in that building, there's places for loading zones so that they're not blocking parking or traffic. Tonight is the time set for public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. Anybody in the committee have any comments? Do you know if it's been used properly since they I think, uh, you know, again, the, 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 the key word there is the, the commercial vehicle unloading. Um, it, it has been used um, uh, intermittently by uh, delivery vehicles, but um, certainly the ordinance allows it to be enforced from the standpoint that a commercial vehicle is actively loading or unloading at that point. I have seen delivery cars there, but I have not yet seen, well, have maybe felt that they're the right time. There have been trucks. A there. large yeah. truck. Okay, good. Does anybody from the public have any comments on this proposed ordinance? Okay. I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance <coughs> be adopted on final reading and that the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with the law. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call vote? Yes. 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 Ms. Thal Egler, next ordinance. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Township of Milburn Ordinance 2499-18, an ordinance to amend and supplement time limit parking, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets, and parking prohibited during certain hours on certain streets, ordinances of the Township of Milburn. Um, I don't know if any of you were here when we first introduced this. This affects mostly all, most streets in the Washington section, um, you don't have so Lane Street, Church Street, Rector Street, Spring Street, Spring Street, <coughs> Willow Street, Spring and Willow again, Church, Meeker Place, Rector Street. So what they did is they changed the amount of times you can park at certain hours on each of these streets. And it really affects the residents. It affects um, a lot of the kids who park for the high school. Are all the signs up? Have they been changed in that neighborhood? No. No, they won't be changed until the ordinance. Okay, so it's really important that if you live in Washington section, when your kids are in school, you really should be made aware of this. And it'll be on our website. It's a lot of pages, so you really should see where they've changed the hours and the days, because you don't want to get a ticket. Um, so, can I, can yeah, I just, uh, please. Just, just, to, just to clarify a little bit, that it is also meant to organize the parking down there so that it is um, that there's not parking on both sides of the street. On a lot of those streets are narrow streets, um, and to prohibit parking on um, the busier through streets um, during certain times. Again, and they don't would only apply uh, between um, uh, designated hours and not on holidays and weekends. And the proposed address the time to be uniform throughout the entire section. So it should help. And tonight is the time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. Any comments from the committee? <coughs> Any comments from the public on this ordinance? I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with law. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call? Mr. Levy? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rosenberg? Yes. Mr. Yes. 
onto Old Business, the Sustainable Essex Alliance Energy Aggregation Program. Say that five times better. <laughs> Sustainable Essex Alliance Energy Aggregation Program. Mr. McDonald, do you have some comments on that before we begin? Yeah, just uh, wanted to bring this up um, prior to, uh, but the, as you know, the, the Township Committee has been exploring um, the possibility of entering into the um, Community Ener Energy Aggregation Program with uh, Maplewood and several other Essex County communities, such as Glen Ridge um, and uh, South Orange. So the, what's, what's before the committee tonight is an ordinance for introduction that would um, allow the township to be, in this, in this ordinance, it establishes the township as a lead agency. Um, <clears throat> which allows it to be what's called an aggregator uh, in energy. This does, this does not mean <clears throat> that the township will take that role as lead agency from the Community Energy Aggregation Program. It just sets up the mechanism so that um, Milburn is allowed to do that. Um, it also does provide the flexibility should um, the Community energy, energy Aggregation Program not work out in the best interest of the residents, that it could, um, that the municipality could look to do it on its own at some point in the future. Um, and that's the purpose of the ordinance that is on for first reading tonight. And I think it's important to note that this is a way to not only potentially save money for the residents, but to go out and get more green energy versus brown energy. And it should be a very positive experience. Um, we do this now for all our municipal buildings, and we save a lot of money in our energy costs. So I think this is something that is a plus for the town, the residents. And as Alex said, if when the aggregated, when the group, if we don't think this works best for Melbourne, we can then go out on our own and look for another source to do this. So this opens up that opportunity. <coughs> First, we'll do Ordinance 2500-18. Mr. Levy. I present an ordinance entitled 2500-18 of the Township of Milburn amending Section 411 of the Township of Milburn Development Regulations and Zoning Ordinance Code entitled Guarantees and Inspections to Clarify and Provide Necessary Amendments to Conform to Municipal Land Law. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend the Township of Milburn Development Regulations to bring the requirements of Section 411 into compliance with a recently adopted statute concerning the posting of performance guarantees in connection with land development projects. This is largely a technical ordinance change. Uh, it assures installation and maintenance of certain on-track improvements, the furnishing of performance guarantee, the provision for a maintenance guarantee in accordance with law, and requires a developer to furnish, among other things, replacement performance guarantees as a condition of approval of permit updates under the State Uniform Construction Code. Again, this is largely a technical uh, ordinance update. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading, and that the Township Clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law and the item, and for a hearing and final passage on Tuesday, May 15, 2018. I have a second. Second. I have a roll call vote. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lagerford? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Paul Egloff? Yes. Ordinance 2501-18, Ms. Paul Egloff. I would like to present an ordinance entitled Township of Milburn Ordinance Number 2501-18, an ordinance of the Township of Milburn, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the establishment of a government energy aggregation program. You want to open up the questions? Alex explained it. Sure. Okay. I move that the ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading, and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law in the item and for hearing and final passage on Tuesday, May 15th, 2018. I have a second. Second. I have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lindenberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Blackwell? Yes. Okay. Moving along. <coughs> New business. Does any committee member have an item of new business to discuss? <clears throat> Hearing none, seeing none, old business. Does any committee member have an item of old business to address? The one that we have on here is <laughs> the Milburn Impervious Law and Building Height Verification Policy. 
we do have two members from the environmental. We have a current chairperson of the environmental commission, and we do have someone else in the audience. I believe I saw Mr. Juris. He's here. He, who can answer a question. So if Elizabeth may take the lead on this. There are also copies on the table here, too, as well, right, Christine? Yeah, the environmental, yeah, the environmental resolution. Um, we read something similar, very similar, um, and there were some slight modifications by uh, Martha as the Senate member in her comments. Um, a resolution by the Milburn Township Environmental Commission. A verification of asphalt lot coverage and building heights in accordance with zoning requirements for new dwellings in Milburn Township. Whereas the Environmental Commission of the Township of Milburn is committed to ensuring that new dwellings, which result in new impervious surfaces and new building heights, do not exceed zoning restrictions for total lot coverage and maximum building height. And whereas the Commission recognizes that increases in impervious lot coverage can result in additional stormwater runoff conditions that can adversely affect stormwater runoff patterns on neighboring properties, as well as the overall capacity of nearby stormwater collection systems. And whereas the Commission also acknowledges that increased stormwater runoff can cause additional soil erosion to the environment and may increase the potential for flooding on neighbor neighboring properties. And whereas the Commission also acknowledges that building height exceedances can adversely affect the scale of the surrounding community as well as access to light and air for adjacent properties. And whereas currently there is no mandatory enforcement mechanism for verifying that zoning requirements, um, including total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height are not being exceeded during construction of new dwellings. And whereas the Commission wishes that compliance be verified for total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height for all new dwellings, and that the zoning calculation form be revised and resubmitted reflecting the ASCO condition. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Commission that the Township of Milburn adopt the policies specified in the following clauses. A, that the Township of Milburn develop a standardized verification process for determining compliance with total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height involving new dwellings as a precondition for obtaining a certificate of occupancy. And B, that the Township of Milburn requires an as-built survey of the new dwelling that shows total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and certified ridge height to be prepared by a New Jersey licensed land surveyor, knowing that the ridge height certification be done at the time the building planning is complete so that it can be corrected at too high, and that the Township of Millbridge should stipulate in the Township Land Development Ordinances that a New Jersey licensed engineer or architect certify via a revised zoning calculation form that the new building complies with the total lot coverage building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height based upon the asphalt survey of the new dwelling, driveway, walks, patio, deck, etc. And be it further resolved that the Commission advises and respectfully suggests that the Mayor and Township Committee of the Township of Milburn show their support for the verification of asphalt lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and building heights in accordance with the Township zoning requirements for new dwellings by adopting resolutions or amending the Township Land Development Ordinances embodying the principles discussed here within. It was passed unanimously um, on January 10th, 2017 by the Environmental Commission. So I want to thank you. You have both really worked so hard, and Martha was very instrumental from our engineering department, our building department. They all are very much in favor of this. They help with all the wording and all the Changes. Um, I think this is very important because a lot of there's a lot of building going on in town and it's not being watched. And this is going to give us some protection for new construction only at this point. No, I think. Yeah. I think we also covered that it's not an onerous amount of money to the builder or the whoever is you know getting these permits, and I think it's fair and reasonable. There were also comments at the last time, the last reading about possibly the foundation should be included in this, 
but I believe that Martha feels that they do measure the foundation and verify that um, easily. Um, so the building department or the inspection department does that. Right. So we already have that. Right. He said that there is already a mechanism to double check that that once they put the stakes in, the foundation has to just follow where they put the stakes and permitting properly. Uh, the committee have questions before this is introduced at a future hearing? Uh, Mr. <laughs> I have no questions. Okay. Yeah. Are you inclined mm -hmm. at some point to, to yeah. approve something like this? Not that. Okay, well, you read us the ordinance, right? No, right. Well, you read us the resolu your, your resolution, but it would be something similar to that. Have other towns uh, with new construction required this from their residents? Most towns do. You know, like Summit, um, Northville, um, Of course. And is that new, that, or they've done that for a long time? Um, they've done it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, just to be fair, I, when this was originally introduced, I had asked for uh, builders to hear and voice an objection, if any, for developers, and to my knowledge, none have. So their silence, to me, indicates either A, they're indifferent, or B, they approve, or perhaps they're just ignoring it. Either way, for my purposes, um, the lack of a, a builder objection or any other objection suggests to me that I'm likely to consider this. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. So, at this point, um, every, there's a consensus that we can authorize our attorney and, and the township to prepare the ordinance. I would be good with that, yes. Thank you. I have no objection. Yeah, again, you don't ordinance have to vote on anything today, I don't mean to. <laughs> but if there was anything that needed to be changed, we would ask them now or clarify. This is the chance time to discuss with them. But right. with me, as always, it's with ordinance writing. So sure. Well, we authorize our attorney to do that. <coughs> okay. We're about to do public discussion, so on everything. So. Oh, um, I do have one more question of public business. Where do you stand on live streaming our meetings? Because <laughs> I want to be on TV, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> Limelight, right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, actually, we are uh, in process, as you can see, we're back there. Um, but it is not hooked up, it is not live. Don't <laughs> wait. <laughs> but uh, we, have, uh, we just have to bring in the contractor one more time to, to hook this stuff up. Great. Do we have it's an expectation? I would say, uh, well, uh, I, I'm hopeful for the 17th. Oh. And any word on the LED board outside of town hall so we can share all our wonderful information with the residents? There is nothing. Nothing. But we're looking. Correct. Okay. okay. Any other old business? No. Okay. Public discussion. Before we start, I want to remind you this is a business meeting. We begin with the business of the township. We end with public comment. We're about to start our public comment. There's no place at this meeting for denigrating or describing fellow residents, volunteers, or any of us. There's no place at this meeting for heckling. And again, it's a business meeting, so let's comport ourselves appropriately. So, when invited to speak, please come to the lectern, state your name and address, and speak into the podium microphone so your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded, and eventually on TV. Whenever an audience or committee member reads from a prepared statement, you have to give a copy or email it to our clerk. Her email is cgotti at milburntownship.org. To help facilitate an orderly, orderly meeting and permit all to be heard, we're asking you to limit your comments to three minutes. It's also requested that you don't repeat what others have said. If you have something to say that takes more than three minutes, I would like you to, after three minutes, to give someone else a chance, just so there's time for everyone to be heard. But we will stay here until you finish all that you wanted to say. And we're going to do this in height order. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was just my only prerogative that I wanted. So if anybody has anything in public discussion, please come to the microphone. Good evening, everyone. Eric Siegel, 12 East Willow Street in Millbrook. Uh, I'm glad to be on this side of the microphone now. So uh, 
First, I just want to uh, thank everyone for their service. I'm not here to heckle yet. But uh, uh, what I wanted to talk about truly is uh, I was quite surprised to see the announcement about the uh, closed door negotiation for 30 to 40 East Willow Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to myself, <coughs> what can possibly be going on at 30 to 40 East Willow Street? So I can only assume that the town council is thinking about potentially moving uh, the town dump to East Willow Street. After we already were dumped on with a radioactive uh, medical facility on our block, and the township really didn't do much to stop it, uh, we are quite concerned on East Willow Street that our block will be considered for something like this. I only assume this, I have no uh, real uh, information about what you're planning to do with this, but I only assume that because of the, the clandestine uh, type of uh, non-announcement about it, that I know you're allowed to negotiate behind the scenes and allowed to negotiate at closed meetings. We did that on the school board. I understand that. But if it was something for positive for the town, <coughs> I would feel that the secrecy is too much to bear for the uh, residents and the businesses in East Willow Street. I think that if it was something positive for the town, we would have been jumping up and down supporting it. A new field, perhaps. Uh, something to uh, you know, improve our area. But to move something, a dump, to another area is not beneficial to our area of town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, can you explain the procedure with respect to closed meetings, which I'm sure you know as a school board? Yes. What well, I just wanted to clarify that there are no clandestine negotiations. The Township Committee had a closed session meeting in order to receive advice from our firm as to how a process is undertaken with respect to acquisition of property. Uh, this is in its most formative stages. <coughs> nothing will happen. Nothing has been decided. Uh, there would have to be an enactment by this governing body approving the, the appraisal of the property which it sought to acquire and to authorize you know, its acquisition. So, uh, Are we allowed to know what it's for? No, if no, we're going to purchase? All of that, all of that <coughs> at the moment, is going to get the administrator and then, then the township committee to evaluate various uses and uh, for this and other properties. Right? That's what I consider clandestine. Well, mm -hmm. well just privileged is different from clandestine in the sense that if we have a conversation with our attorney and we're considering options, <coughs> until it's time to release that information, it's privileged, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps you didn't mean this. I, I thought in listening to your remarks, that you thought that the township committee was meeting with property owners to negotiate with them behind closed doors <coughs> in closed sessions. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to disabuse you of that notion if that no, was your thought. Not my notion. Okay. I just want to know what you're planning to do with the land. Mm -hmm. At this point, we have nothing <coughs> to report. More to come. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. I, I actually have a question for Dr. Siegel. You said that um, we are concerned, using the pronoun we. Is it um, you and others, I assume, on? Every business owner on East Willow Street has been notified and on bleeder. Mm. Is it fair to say your comments reflect the views of uh, the, majority, the other commercial owners? The majority that have gotten back to us, yes. Thank you. Mr. Mesa? Thank you. It may agree with Ryan. Um, there was no uh, provision for uh, any uh, public comments on resolution 18-108, uh, the advertising for removal of the uh, flex parking. Uh, the question for uh, Mr. Falcon, uh, does, <coughs> all right, uh, if, if you would care to uh, ask uh, uh, council uh, on Robert this, or whether you, whether you can uh, address it yourself. Uh, Mr. Falcon had indicated that uh, there could be some ramifications if we got bids in and uh, we chose uh, 
to reject them, that there, there was some downside there. Question I have is, do we need to get uh, county approval to remove uh, the uh, flex parking and replace it with conventional parking? And if we do, have we received that approval? Mr. Falcon, can you first explain whether public comment is necessary before we adopt a resolution and then answer his question? No, it isn't, but this is the appropriate time. Uh, it's my understanding. Yes, the county is working the county right away. Um, I have no information about whether the county has been contacted or approval secured. I'm afraid I can't shed any more. All right. My concern is uh, I'm taking no position on the flex parking of removal. My concern is whether we've got exposure uh, if we're going ahead and authorizing uh, uh, bids for it, uh, and then it turns out that we need uh, county approval and it's uh, denied, uh, are we on the hook for uh, monetary damages with the low bidder? These bidding documents, yeah. oh, sorry, <coughs> documents have not been prepared, and my office will be working on this contest. It will be taken in the right sequence. We're not, your good concern question. is a good one. But the township is not going to go out and start bidding the project. It should also be noted that the resolution addresses that concern by stating that the county proof must be left before we go. We'll be happy to share a copy of the resolution with you, Mr. Major. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Rupa. I live at 74 Old Short Hill Road. Can you please state your full name, Ms. Datla? Uh, it's Rupa Datla. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to um, address the concern that Ms. Levy uh, had on uh, the builders not being here. I'm a builder, and I do think that's a great um, thing to follow in terms of height restrictions and uh, um, the coverage and stuff. But I think also um, there should be a certain percentage of deviance that should be considered, and this is coming from someone that um, had a three-month delay just because there was a... Uh, 0.15 inches deviance because it was a superior wall installed and it's like a, a different a system. So things like that, as long as there is a percentage deviation that can be excused, I think it, that should not be a project and having to come back to the board for the approvals and stuff like that. Um, the other thing also with the height restrictions is uh, a certain amount of that has to fall on the architect and the engineer that's calculating the height. At the design phase, it should not fall on exclusively the builder because I've had a situation where they made a mistake in their calculations. We did exactly the plans and then it turned out it was a foot higher. So uh, a percentage of that onus has to go on to the architect and the engineers as well and that should be part of um, whatever resolution is approved in terms of these changes, I think. Um, I don't know how that could be. I don't know how that could be in the ordinance because it, the ordinance doesn't assign blame. It doesn't it assign blame. It just require. It just has requirements. So, uh, it w uh, so then uh, maybe then the building officials are reviewing. Then they have to make sure that whatever calculations have been submitted are in fact doable. So there should be... Um, right, that's a different request. Though. Right. So that, that, that uh, how, has nothing to do with ordinance, right? Right. How it goes about, um, I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is um, the owner should not be on the final person that's actually building. There should be other places where there's checks and balances as well. I'm not sure I agree. I'm not, I'm not sure I agree that we get involved in uh, assigning blame for failure to comply with ordinance or uh, clear, having a query as to whether it's the engineer or the architect or the builder. I mean, that, no, that's I, not, I think uh, that's I'm not, not the trying department's to, purview. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to assign blame. I'm trying to ask where you're going to have checks and balances to make sure that it does not end up with being when the, when the building is up and you're trying to take it down. It has to be starting at the planning phase, is what I'm saying. The ins you're talking about the inspections along the way. Correct. So, you're, so you want the inspections along the way to be accurate. Correct. So that you as a builder aren't stuck with having to tear something down at the end. Correct. Because of, it could be anybody along the line, but it should be, if there is 20 inspections going on, why does it have to be at the, uh, 
when the complete framing is done, that somebody has to find out it's too tall or too short or wh whatever the case may be. Well, right? from, from my so point, there is a building inspection I, that I goes through all of that. I mean, I would defer to, to Mr. McDonald and the inspectors, but I don't, I, I don't, again, that we're not in the position of trying to protect the builder ultimately from from this issue. So I, I would suspect that the, both the architect and the engineer and the builder get together and conform their own project in accordance with statute rather than us having to confirm along the building way. Um, I, I don't that creates more work for the building department. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your thoughtful comments. Uh, thank you. Mr. Juris, anything you want to respond on that? Um, the, the issue about the building height is that that's the whole reason why I'm measuring before the house is completely constructed. So right. that it, if it's too high, they could easily take it down. You know. So you're soon. saying during the phase is when they can check it, not at the end? Yeah. So before any too much damage, right. too much. Right. Thank you. Any other member of the public? Mr. Kirsch? <coughs> so Kirsch, 93 Cedar Street. Um, I wanted to maybe expand on Dr. Siegel's concerns from the standpoint of private citizens in the town. And I had asked previously um, when this came up just what the, you know, what, what the meeting was about that mentioned the address. And I guess what, at least what I'm thinking as a citizen is, is that if a group of people in the township are getting advice about buying attractive land, then they probably are interested in that tract of land. If they're interested in that tract of land, they probably have some idea about what they might like use it for, even if it's not set on one goal. So, especially if I was in the position of a business person who had a business over there, I would want to know as much as I could about what was going on. And the feeling of a lot of citizens, including me, is we don't know as much because we're not being told why this started, why the interest is there. Now, I don't know what you're allowed to speak about as far as that goes. I'm just saying that I'm trying to have you understand, uh, at least the citizen's point of view, is that if we could, if we were able to know the thinking behind this, we could say, okay, they're thinking, they're interested in this practice, they're getting advice because they're interested in it. They're interested in it because they are thinking about doing A, B, or C. And then we can have more confidence in it going forward. And whether we agreed or not with different things it might be used for, we'd be more able to follow it and we'd be more confident in what the township government was doing. And I think this comes up in a lot of cases. Um, and I know there are times when maybe legally or from a planning standpoint, you practically you really can't tell us everything because you're involved in it. But I'm just saying that whenever you can, that's kind of the citizen's point of view. It would certainly um, it would certainly increase trust and communication, and sometimes it might even get the opinions out there before another step was taken when people felt they were caught off guard. It might even get more support behind something sometimes, or it might get the criticism out there much earlier, and it could be dealt with. So I'm just asking you to be as forthcoming as you possibly can legally, and maybe not be concerned with uh, telling us every fact that you can, and, and with offering it instead of having us having to ask to put those details out there. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. On that, Deputy Mayor, I think it's a fair a fair point, and I defer to our attorney, Mr. Falcone. As I understand the sunshine, we are authorized not to disclose certain, there are exceptions to the sunshine law that allow a committee, a municipal body, not to disclose certain things, contract negotiations, purchase property, things like that. The Sunshine Law, to my knowledge, does not prevent disclosure of those topics. It just allows them not to be disclosed. And so, if that's right, then we as a body could elect to make those disclosures, right? Yeah, the, the, the Sunshine Law creates a series of topics which a governing body is authorized to discuss in closed session. Now, once that is done, then the liberty of members to go and disclose to the public what has been described there, discussed in closed session, is put, that, that cannot be done. But if you should elect as a body right. to 
disclose everything that you have uh, been discussing in private, then you could do that. But, I, but bearing in mind that the, the rationale for, let's just do, take this generically, <coughs> you would probably not want people with whom you're about to enter negotiations to know what your strategy is, what your pricing is, what your, how you plan to formulate the transaction, and those are the kinds of things that would be among the topics in connection with the real estate purchase that would be done in the closed session. Yeah, I but yes, yeah, I, I agree with the premise that as you get to the point, <coughs> you know, for example, of, let's see, uh, what is this uh, parcel suitable for? You know, you have to make some decisions about where and when and that sort of thing. That's something that could be discussed. Right. I think the speakers are advocating that yeah. uh, that it should be disclosed that if you're considering buying two parcels of land on East Willow, you should disclose what your thoughts are on the use of it. Not necessarily what you're paying for it, what the negotiations are, what the strategies are for the purchase and things like that. I think everyone would understand that that shouldn't be disclosed. And that is protected by the Sunshine Law. But we're not prevented. It's not unlike a privilege, which is a very topical thing these days. The, the, the privilege is owned by uh, the client, and the client can uh, decide to make the disclosure in opposite of the public privilege. It's sort of the same thing. So I think that those are fair points being raised by speakers. That if you're if, that if the committee is expect is uh, interested in uh, discussing at least in closed session making a purchase of a property, the public has a right to know what are the potential uses of that property so the public can be heard. Right. Okay. Anyone else? From the public? On that? <coughs> on that issue? No, on any issue. Oh, okay. sure. Anything you want to talk about. Cool. Please state your name and address. Uh, hello, my name is Alex Moba of 17 Reed Circle in Milburn. Uh, I'm here tonight to make a public comment uh, on the environmental zoning traffic and safety concerns related to the proposed gas station and 7-Eleven development proposal uh, at 132 Milburn Avenue that's currently before the Milburn Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, this is the former Exxon station that burned down in 2009 uh, and was under several feet of floodwaters during Hurricane Irene in 2011. Um, the site sits in a floodplain of the Rahway River and is less than 200 feet from the residential Wyoming zone, Temple B'nai Israel, and several doctor's offices. It has been declared a toxic contaminated site by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Now NJ Energy Corp. is applying for 22 variances to not only reopen the gas station, but to also add a 24-hour 7-Eleven to the property. Um, they are asking for a use variance and a bulk variance relief on a wide range of issues, including permitted use, dual com commercial uses, excessive lighting, uh, insufficient lot coverage, excessive sign size, not providing a required uh, environmental impact statement, and more. Uh, so I'm here tonight to represent the views of many of my fellow neighbors on Reef Circle. Um, and we believe this is not a responsible proposal. Um, and we think it would be harmful to Milburn Township and specifically the South Mountain and Wyoming neighborhoods uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, firstly, the site has been declared a toxic contaminated site by the NJDEP due to the presence of gasoline-related constituents in the soil and groundwater. Uh, the Milburn Environmental Commission uh, this last week unanimously passed a memorandum on April 7th calling on NJ Energy Corp to provide the township with more complete environmental information than they have currently provided to date uh, on issues ranging from the, staff, the status of remediation at the site, uh, fuel tank integrity, NJ uh, DEP approved site permits, and more. Uh, Milburn Township should demand this information and ensure that any development at this location is held to the environmental standards, state and federal laws, and industry best practices laid out in the Commission's memorandum. Uh, now, secondly, the 24-hour 7-Eleven is another problematic aspect of the proposal. Uh, it would bring excessive noise and overnight commercial activity to an area that is adjacent to residential zones. Um, while there is apparently no town ordinance uh, against 24-7 operation of a business, there is no precedent that I know of in town uh, for allowing all-night business hours. 
Um, so I would call on the members of this committee to perhaps introduce a new ordinance um, closing that loophole. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also stress that 24-hour 7-Elevens are known to attract crime. Uh, in just last year, in 2017, there were armed robberies at 7-Elevens in Maplewood and Berkeley Heights. Uh, if, I, if I may continue, I just have a few more uh, points to make. Um, the lighting is another huge issue here. Um, the development proposal is asking for four and a half times the amount of lighting uh, than is specified as the maximum in, in town ordinance. Um, finally, the proposed development is at the corner of Milburn Avenue and Box Hall Road. It's an already busy intersection. Um, this proposed development would bring even more traffic problems to this intersection, particularly the left turn from Milburn Ave onto Box Hall which would potentially impact traffic and pedestrian safety. Um, and I would echo the written comments of the town engineer um, that the township should independently and thoroughly um, study these traffic impacts. Um, finally, just a few notes from the township's master zoning plan. I don't okay. have the notes, Mr. Wilbur, yeah. but I just want to comment that yes. this is before the Board of Adjustment, which is a separate board, completely I, different from us. I do understand so, that. To the extent you have those comments, I hope you do share them with the appropriate board, yes. and you can email them to the clerk. But I, what I understand that you're trying to tell us as a committee is if we have the ordinance power to consider a 24-hour mm -hmm. ban, mm -hmm. that's what you're here for, correct? Yes. So and, I lose that I, in your message about lighting <coughs> and... and absolutely. And I just wanted to take the opportunity to raise these issues publicly in public comment because the, the zoning board of adjustment process is extremely parliamentary and does not really provide a forum for open public comment. Mm -hmm. So beyond... And perhaps it does. In the initial meeting, we were only allowed to cross-examine witnesses. And I, I'll we'll have a chance there to present all of this. Great, well, great. I'd uh, like our attorney to explain the process, yeah. but I will also give a commercial to say that there is available spots on the boarding on the, on the uh, board of adjustment and the planning board. So, to the extent that you know that you think it's insular or insulated or whatever, it could be any of you. So, and we and we'd love it. So great. Um, I want to address yeah. just quickly one thing that yeah. you mentioned, because I don't want you to go oh, away yes. thinking that this is a possibility. <clears throat> there, within the last few years, the legislature adopted a statute which changed the law with respect to the ability of a governing body to change the ordinances after an application has been filed. It's no longer okay. able to be done. Uh, when I was the mayor of my hometown in the ancient days, when we saw something coming in the door we didn't want, we said, well, we'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone. Yeah. Uh, Any, uh, yeah. In that case, I guess we'll have to rely on precedent. Well, there are narrow the, uh, exceptions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's some narrow mm -hmm. exceptions, mm -hmm. but I do mm -hmm. want you to think that wholesale yeah. Well, I appreciate Jump that. In. And I thank you uh, uh -huh. for the committee for uh, hearing my comments tonight. Uh, if any members of the public um, are, share our concerns, I would invite them to attend the next Milburn Board of Adjustment meeting on May 7th at 7 p.m. at Milburn Town Hall. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Mr. Any other public comment? Ms. And I wanted to thank you earlier because your is an example of how ad hoc committees can help with government. The ad hoc committee for Washington and South Mountain suggested some changes in the street. Not just us, it, didn't, it came from, from, from the residents. And you saw tonight how that was effectuated into an ordinance and a law. And so now, when my kid gets a parking ticket after over parking you know, for the high school for four hours when he shouldn't, and he should know that's because the residents spoke and were able to change. So thank you for your participation. My pleasure. Sarah Sherman, 42 Greenwood Drive, also president of South Mountain Civic Association. Um, I will echo Alex Moba's concerns, and my organization has partnered with him now. Um, we are also going to be at the, uh, at the zoning board. Um, I did attend one meeting and had the same impression that public discussion is handled very differently, and I was shut down. Um, I understand that I will be able to appear next time and be cross-examined, as I was told. But Perhaps, Mr. Falcon, I'm not certain if I understood you. We did a survey of our members, and 68% did not want a 24-hour uh, business 
at that location. And are you saying that that door is closed to us completely, that we cannot have uh, no, an ordinance? It's, it's worth investigating. What I want is the gentleman to understand that it's not just an open door, that an applicant comes in with a proposal to do certain things, and the township committee can quickly legislate to uh, ban them mm -hmm. or, or turn them down. There's, there are refinements to that which are more than you want to get into up here tonight, but mm -hmm. it's not a carte blanche. But going forward, is this possible? Uh, that it's, we... it's something you ought to take a look at, depending upon what you're proposing whether it's into one of the exceptions. Thank you. 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 A lot to ask a question, but I'll stand a few things out. We took a good walk with Cassie, president of the DMD on Friday, um, through the entire downtown, starting at Town Hall. Uh, circling up all the way to Milburn Avenue to Essex and around back to Lackawanna, back to Wells Fargo, uh, back around. I uh, didn't walk down the, the new street, but I'm going to say more or less either through metering or just parking spaces that weren't identified properly or other different things or parking spaces that have not been put back after planning board applications to approve something, meters have been taken off during construction, not put back. I'm going to say something between, as Alex used the term, I would, but between 20 and 25 parking spaces, Alex said certainly some of them could be done and put back into service quickly under the definition of low-hanging fruit. Um, one, I just wanted to make the potential committee aware that we took this walk, and I wanted to thank Cassie at the DNDA uh, for doing that. Also, it took us a good hour and change. We stopped and talked. We saw all sorts of other things, property owners, people that were not doing perhaps what they should be doing on their aprons, their driveways, their sidewalks, curbing, other items, poles, signage is part of the whole arterial plan. They're behind trees instead of in front of trees. There's pay stations across the street here and down the street that have no signage telling you that you can park. There's pay stations in the middle of 100 long feet. But if you're smart enough to go to the pay station and figure out that maybe you can park there, not that it tells you for how long, but you might find that. I mean, there are things that are just not inviting. Um, I encourage as fast as possible to benefit the downtown to put these parking spaces into service and would encourage Alex and with the DMGA, myself, or anyone to identify those anymore, including in front of Taylor Park. There's a bus stop that's some hundreds of feet long. There's no real signage to Taylor Park to tell you that it's Taylor Park and there's some beautiful roses that are hopefully going to bloom sometime this spring when it comes. Um, Crosswalk over at Lackawanna, there's, there's two of them. We now know when we turn into a one-way street, it shouldn't be on the one side of the street, it should be on the other side. So that's something that easily can be fixed. You know, we're into complete streets, and we should be, but there are some, and I'll, I'll use the term, low-hanging fruit in eliminating um, something. Uh, paving. Uh, Essex Street is all but falling apart, if you haven't noticed, in Main Street. Uh, there's no striping. Many places aren't parked with striping. Uh, there aren't dotted lines with striping. County. I don't know what our plan is for the county's plan when we're supposed to get paving, but it's certainly not happening anytime soon under the definition of the complete streets construction. I encourage any identification to help people navigate safely, carefully, to park, to repark, to come back again, as well as the turning and other things that I asked about at the last minute. I know my first three minutes can I walk away. Another thing that's I think kind of important. Um, Thank you for your vigilance. And actually for yourself. Um, this involves you and Tara. Um, more specifically, um, something occurred yesterday that both first me and then Alex, we both happened to be walking around the downtown yesterday. Um, me at about 11.30, Alex was with someone else, and I came, saw the river, of course, it was hopefully, the rain had come to an end about 11.30, it was cresting, fortunately. Um, walked back toward Main Street, no cameras, literally, person walking. The light pole at the corner, southeast corner of Main Street, is down on the ground. That light pole going back and looking at video, which I did do, including a video, Jody, as you know, from something you and Tara, from something in the past, you and Tara would be dead. The light pole got taken down by Imagine something. That. No, awful. Awful. Something hit the light pole, That's came down on that bench. And while we're taking out perhaps the flex parking spaces, it's not enough. And my question to Alex and, and to Kit. Um, when the township and the police department found it necessary to call 
upon me to ask when there was a hit and run accident. And the town was required to subpoena to get the tape of that. Other times I've been called independently by the police department. There's plenty of times the town doesn't call. It seems like the town doesn't seem to want to call when there might be some, I'm going to use the word, same if I make culpability, whether that be legal or not. I'm not asking I'm for a debate word. Um, the town doesn't seem to call when independent vehicles hit the items in question. Many times the traffic light at the northeast corner. This light came down yesterday. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't look. I'm pretty sure we have, I think, but I haven't looked to see if we have a license plate and the like, but certainly it's a large truck. Came right over the area. There's no question it, it wouldn't have made the turn probably anyway, the cars, the stop line. My question is, I'd like to know the policy of the town, and I know you're not obligated to answer your question. Now, the second is, I think we have the capability under safety, and you see it in many towns, neighborhoods, whether it's bridges, height, going over a bridge, to not have vehicles over a certain size either come through or to make a turn. I encourage the township committee as quickly as possible. There should be no large by definition, whether semis, whether by a 53-foot line, that right-hand turn, and I will share with, with Alex, I will share with Kit, I will share with anyone who wishes to see. This has happened many times. There's just not always the pole that gets hit. There's many times it goes over the landscaping, which is now crushed. And it's going to be a child. It's going to be, unfortunately, it's a good thing. It's 1130. It was pouring rain. It had nothing to do with the weather. Someone's going to get hurt. We're living on, on barge lines. It's happened too, too many times. I encourage, the second part of this is, please consider a review of the ordinance. It's part of Complete Streets to not allow vehicles of one size maybe even come through the downtown during the day, or certainly not to make that right hand turn. There's no reason, we, if you wanted to discuss, there is no reason for any vehicle to come from our side to make the right turn on Main Street. They can come from our side. They need to make the right turn to get someone willow and, and, and the like. They can come in from our seven. If they're going to 78, they should just go straight through town. Mr. Bath, are we allowed to, to make that change? Sorry to interrupt. Are we allowed to make that change? I mean, that's not like a 24-hour thing. That's a safety concern that. If I might, you are you saying um, only semis or anything smaller than semi? The semi is 53, I think, right? We have made, thank you. We have Mazer, the, the engineering firm on. Retainer. This is something the same as in your question. Trailer trucks can't get under the railroad. Arterial missed that in their design. We still have trailer trucks going up Main Street that are getting to the railroad and backing down the street. Now, you may not say it requires an ordinance, but there is a railroad there and it doesn't get through. So that's a practical limitation, but it is causing issues. This also with traffic. Saturday was a great weather day. Fantastic day. There were some issues again with trucks and the like coming in the town. Lots of pedestrians walking around. The more pedestrians walking, the less ability there is to turn. Particularly if you get a large vehicle. You have to wait for the other lanes of traffic crossing it to pass. Alex, can we authorize Mazer to look into that? <coughs> Thank and you. Major also, is Mazer also looking into the possible left hand turn from Maine to Essex at certain hours? Is that something on our. Can we authorize if Mazer hasn't already done that? It was directed at the last meeting, apparently. So. We'll do periodically. I don't need to come up and ask for we Periodically, if we ask questions, to get a response for things of this sort in the same way. Then, as you mentioned, I'm familiar with the Verizon property and what's going on from the seller side. Right? The Township Committee doesn't wish to disclose, but to keep us, if appropriate, you know, aware of what is going on in the process, whether through the website that we're looking at, you know, things that we're able to hear and see, will keep people such as myself tonight or others we'd be very happy to know about and to assist and tell whenever we can. So noted. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly <coughs> uh, Laska and I in Rage Circle. I just I, I want to understand something so forgive my confusion. I, I hear what you're saying that apparently you can't put the 24-7 ordinance on the docket. Um, but then you said find a loophole. So I'm just un unclear what our next steps are. Are we to find some other ordinance that we bring to you? What are our next steps here if there is a loophole? What I, 
what I meant to convey apparently unsuccessfully, I'm sorry. It used to be the case that a municipality could change the setbacks, for example. Like yeah. the setbacks that people are coming into variances for, or change, change uh, zoning requirements, <coughs> uses, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. But by virtue of the adoption of that statute, and the developers were tired of coming in, they got a hold of the legislature, and mm -hmm. eliminated the ability generally of municipalities to change their zoning requirements after an because application of an has application. been filed. Yeah. Right. But the time of decision is the time when the application has been filed. There are exceptions to that statute which I <coughs> suggest that might be taken a look at uh, that have to do with health and, and safety mm -hmm. and, and things of that sort where a municipality <coughs> remains able to legislate the provided they demonstrate that it really falls within one of those exceptions. But by and large, the wide latitude that used to be available to municipalities is no more very narrowly circumscribed now. Right. I didn't mean to talk about any particular 24 hours lighting. I was not addressing myself to any of the No, no, I get that. But what I'm suggesting is that there's a multitude of reasons as to why we wouldn't want a 24-7 business operating in this township. Not just because somebody submitted an application for it, but because there's safety, there's safety concerns. There, we don't have a 24-hour business here. There's no precedence for that. You have crime that comes to 24-7 businesses, especially where that location is. So there's a multitude of reasons. We're not asking just because this application came in. It may have prompted it, but it's not because of the application. So I guess my question is, are, what, what do we need to do? Do we need to, say, bring police reports that show the safety of a 24-7 is... It, it causes problems, and then you're able to add that as well, something the, to vote the, on? The, the, you're quite right. While a regulation might go in an ordinance form, which would affect the town otherwise, but not be available to be imposed on a particular applicant because they already filed their application. If it's a good idea generally, then of course the township committee could move forward. Really a good place to start with that is the planning board. The planning board often originates ordinances. The township planner is the person who often... Is that different from the zoning board that yeah. these hearings are happening? I, I, gather, I, 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 I gather this is at the zoning board of adjustment because there's a yeah, use variance yeah, so, involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no, the planning board is the well, other. It's yeah. too late for her to go yeah. now to the planning board and suggest they consider safety concerns and old. ordinances. For so this, for that, for this application... Yeah. But generally... But, but generally, in general, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have, so in other words, if we go to the planning board and we don't necessarily reference the gas station or the 7-Eleven, but we talk about our concerns about a 24-hour business, period, then we can potentially get that added as an order. But you also have a very concerned member of the planning board here who hears you and can introduce that concern at a future meeting, and I'm pretty sure you will. Yes, I will. In fact, okay. our planning board meeting is tomorrow night, 7.30, in this room. <laughs> so do, do we need to come and say, hey, can you add this? Like how? Well, too soon. But you can start coming on planning board meetings are the second and first and second Wednesdays of the month. Okay. And you know, it's like this is how residents first, get interested and in activated. First, but like you, know, you start coming to meetings, you see what's going on. You right. learn about these issues in town that affect your neighborhood, your other neighborhoods, right. and these are all important things that we need to know, and we can start working on them. Okay. All right. Everybody got there. Okay. <laughs> I guess the bottom line is, you're going to have to find other reasons that are yeah. more okay. Okay. Got it. to come in to us. Anyone else? Mm, 41 Main Street, 266 Essex. Um, Main and Essex. Um, I'm going to thank the Township Committee for uh, possibly moving forward with the uh, uh, taking out the flexible parking. I can tell you personally now it's been over almost five quarters, a year, almost a year and a half of dealing with it. We've had a lot of complaints, mostly from 
business owners, residents, customers, uh, family, friends. So we've given it enough time. I would encourage to move forward. It's not a lot of money compared to the $6 million that was spent already. It's a couple percentage points, possibly. Um, I would um, not miss the opportunity of doing it this summer. Please don't wait. I mean, it'd be another whole other year. We have to deal with it. I think the survey speaks for itself. I mean, you could just speak to the all the business owners on Melbourne Avenue from Dunkin' Donuts to Starbucks on both sides of the street. They're there. They get a bird's eye view every day of what goes on. We thank you for trying something progressive that could have been possibly great, but it's just not working. So uh, please move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Any other member of the public have a comment? I have a picture of, of uh, mm -hmm. Alyssa Sutton, 75 Mountain View Road, lifelong residence and lover of Milburn. The light pole, not the traffic light, don't be mistaken, the traffic light has been clipped also. I have pictures of the clippings on the pole if you want to see that. This is the actual light. I don't know the value of this light. Maybe we should keep like a dozen in stock and just plug it. Because <laughs> the light and the name Milburn, which is just... I just thought it was ironic, metaphorical, is lying on the ground. So this is part of our $8 million project on the very four corners of, of the downtown of Milburn that is, has suffered so much, and this is just laying there. So now we're going to clean it up, maybe even put it back, which we really shouldn't, because the bump out is sticking too far out. So we're now going to ask all these trucks to reroute their routes because we allowed some knuckleheads who are designers, which we, I think, should go back and sue them. I mean, that's, you know, when we handed out the survey, I actually took the time to go to everybody in town. People don't want to pay for it. They hate what's going on. Why can't we go back to these designers? Why can't we go back to this arterial who we empowered to do this to come back and pay to remove this parking? So that's one question I, I ask you. Next question is, um, I was walking in town with my survey camera now. Thank you. And no problem, my pleasure. Um, now, this left over here by Starbucks that we're no longer allowed to do, everybody gets upset by this blue mercury, the left. Now, is anybody allowed to turn there? Is a fire truck allowed to turn there? Yeah. Is a police car allowed to turn there? Yeah. What about a town public works truck? Are they allowed to turn there? Probably should not be. Okay. So while we're busy pointing fingers at everybody else, we if we don't tell our people to do the right thing, like a police car with no siren, a public works car that maybe have some branches on the back of the truck that almost hit me because they decided they needed to get to the dump faster and I needed to make the left turn to return me and my child home. But this is, this is we're asking people to not jaywalk, obey laws, look at the cars that may hit them because they've just decided they don't want to stop for pedestrians, but the very people who we're supposed to be looking up to and actually telling our kids to respect, are, they're not doing it. What? So we, we just have a fundamental flaw going on here. Do you have any uh, evidentiary... <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I know that I went to high school with half the people in public works. I knew the person driving the car. I can handle a lineup. It's really more, it's more the uh, principle. It's, it's a very principle that we're, so while we're looking at this pole on the ground, and I'm looking at the public's work making the left, and I'm hearing everybody bitching about this flex parking, but they don't want to pay for it. There's just so many fundamental problems. Um, I just really hope that we move forward with the removal of that, and I hope that we can ask the very people running this town, not, not you guys, the people we actually pay, um, to, to walk the walk. You're right. Thank you. Just a comment on the flexible parking and the removal. At the estimate that was given, I did ask Mr. McDonald to give a per capita cost. you want to report it? No, I don't want to get in. I, I, I only don't want to get in. <laughs> okay, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. decent, but, you know, I, I don't want to get into the cost. Okay, well, I don't want to affect the, the bidding, but, but it's... I'll, I'll go out and 
Okay. Move to adjourn. Adjourn. Thank you.